Well, hey everyone and welcome to Centro. We are so glad that you are here with us today. If you're watching online, we would love for you to take a moment to share this experience on whatever platform you're watching on. It goes a long way in helping us spread the word about this amazing community of faith we have. And if you're new here and haven't had a chance to connect with someone on our team, we'd love to meet you. And if you're joining us today in person after this experience, head to the connection wall in our lobby to meet some of our pastoral team and volunteers in Blue Shirt. They are ready to answer any questions you have. And if you're joining us online, we'd love to hear from you as well. And we'd love to know where you're watching us from. And please reach out to our online host in the chat window with any question you have. We want everyone to be part of what's happening here today. Here at Central, our vision is simple, helping you connect with God and each other. That's it. Everything we do here from our Sunday experience and groups to our kid and youth program revolves around those two things. So to help you connect with God, we want to encourage you to open your heart to experience God's love for you as we worship together. Connection to God can look different for everyone. But we want you to know this is a safe place to explore your faith and relationship with Him. Then to help you connect with others, we have groups. Our groups are designed with you in mind and how can we best serve you in your next steps. So to ensure we have something for everyone, we have four types of groups here at Central. Community groups, small groups, interest group, and support groups. Each group is led by leaders committed to help you connect to God and others on the same journey. A simple way you can get connected today is joining us in the cafe after our 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. experience for our Encore group. If you have any question about that something was mentioned in the message, this is a great place to talk about it. We have group leaders ready to continue the conversation with you and discuss any questions or thoughts you may have. It's also a great place to connect with others and learn a bit more about our church family. To join us, just head over to Cafe after this morning's experience and look for the table reservation for Encore Group. No matter where you are on your journey, we are here to help you. Another great opportunity we have for you to connect with God and others is through our Tuesday morning prayer group. This group meets every Tuesday morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. online via Zoom. Join us for an hour as our ministry team leads a short devotional and then spend some time in prayer. Hear from others how God is speaking to them and be encouraged as we pray together. There's something amazing that happens when you take the time to start your day in prayer. This group is open for everyone and you can find the Zoom link in our website at centralcc.ca slash connect. For more information about all the groups, visit our website at centralcc.ca slash groups and search the list of options or head to our connection wall after this experience and someone from our team will love to help you get connected as well. If you have any question about anything we have mentioned here today, you can text our number at 905-937-5610 or visit our website at centralcc.ca slash connect. It's our best resource to stay updated on everything we have talked about here today. You can also scan the QR code on the seat back in front of you, complete the connection card, and as always, you can head to our connection wall and we'd love to help you any way we can. So that's all from me today. Our experience is about to begin. I invite you to stand with me if you are able as we worship together. Welcome everyone. Join us as we sing songs of worship today. We're going to teach you a brand new one. So let's enjoy together. Your blood has my future in. Your heart loves with no condition. I'm invited into freedom, forgiven, whiter than the snow. There's a living found, I know. Grace and mercy overflow. Love is come to save.
good father you've been to us I'm gonna sing about it and I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're that I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am.
That's who you are today. You are a child of God if you place your trust in Jesus. Yes, Lord. I just believe, just take a moment right now. I just believe the Father just wants you to experience His love. Just receive it as a child of God. There's nothing that you could have done to earn it, to merit it. Just receive it right now, just right where you are. You're a good, good Father. You're my beloved, my precious son, my precious daughter, oh, I've given it all to you, through my son, you can trust my plans for you, they're perfect, they're perfect, I'm working it for your good. Gracious and loving, merciful. You just receive it right now.
experienced it and I know that some of us perhaps this morning are not in a good situation not in a good circumstance but we have a good God whom we can trust a good father who is working things out for our good do you believe that this morning so let's just take a moment right now and just sing this simple chorus it says God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Yes, God is so Another language in Spanish, the same. Dios, bueno es. Dios, bueno es. Dios, bueno es. Bueno es. Sí, Señor, todos juntos. It's in your goodness and your faithfulness that we trust. We thank you. That it was not because of our goodness that we can have relationship with you. It's not of our merit, not of our trying to be a better person. But it's because of what Jesus has done for us. That we have relationship with you. And so we thank you that you're so good. And you show that goodness over and over again. Thank you for your faithfulness, oh God. We love you and we trust you. And we pray for anyone that is here today, watching online. Pray, oh God, that they would recognize your goodness. And just to begin to praise you and just worship you right where they are. Even though their circumstance might not be good, but I know, oh God, because of your faithfulness, because of what you've done in the past, 
we can trust you and that you're working things for our good. So we thank you in advance. We praise you in advance. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. and he has amazing things in store for you. However, sometimes life doesn't feel like that, does it? I know I'm gonna take you from this high to this bit of a downer, but I just wanna acknowledge this morning that sometimes life is hard, right? And I know some of you are sitting here today and you've been going through some pretty tough times. I mean, just look at our world. There's divorce, there's challenging children, there's job loss there's death, there's sickness, there's all of these things going on and life is hard. And I think what's really hard is sometimes we don't even know the why. I mean, if we knew the why, somehow it would make it a little bit better, maybe a little easier to handle. I think about how when someone close to you is sick and they have all these kind of random symptoms, you know, like their toe hurts and their earlobe is sore and they have a cough and then a bit of a headache. And, you know, and then you kind of live in this place of waiting, waiting for doctor's appointments, waiting for tests, waiting for test results. And then finally you get a diagnosis and you're like, okay, now I know why I'm feeling this way. And then it's kind of short lived because then you're like, but why me? Why am I sick? Why am I suffering through this? Why are they going through this? And I think something in us wrestles with, I just wanna know why, because then I can handle it. Then I can push through it. When we talk to someone else and they're going through a rough time, don't you like instinctively just kind of wanna say, well, this is probably why this is happening. Like as if somehow that helps them. And we wanna give them hope and encouragement. And yet we can't because that's not our role. We don't know why. There's only one person I know that knows why and that is God, right? He's the only person that knows. So we are in week two of our top five most read Bible verses and I get to share with you Romans 8, 28. So Romans 8, 28, here's the verse. And we know that all thing, that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And I could hear some of you saying that verse with me today, a very well-known verse. And this verse has the power to somehow, sometimes give us our why. It can answer that question. It can give us hope. However, I've also seen this verse do some damage, some harm. Three years ago, I met this amazing couple, Kelly and Vicki Wilms. They showed up at my St. Catharines community group. It was my first group. They showed up, we got to know each other and we have loved spending time in the group and outside the group, just getting to know one another. And over the course of the three years, they have shared some of their story with me. And they have been through some tough times and They have this amazing relationship. In fact, if you follow them on Facebook, you'll notice they've been married for 36 years, which is amazing. They, um, Vicki will often joke around that she was promised to Kelly when she was still in the womb by her mother. Um, But they started dating when they were 15 and 16 years old. They got married and were ready to welcome a brand new baby into their house. They both grew up in faith, excited for hopes and dreams they had for this little one. They wanted to share Jesus, raise him in faith, have that personal relationship. And you know what? I think it would be more powerful for you to hear them tell their story 
and how this verse, Romans 8, 28, intersected with their life, with all that was going on. So would you watch this with me? Okay, well, this morning we're talking about Romans 8, 28. And I know that this verse has been kind of a bit of a trigger for you guys in your life when you were kind of going through some different circumstances. So I wondered if you would share a bit of your story and how this verse kind of entered into that story. When we were very young, we were 22 years age, just newly married. We had a beautiful baby girl named Katie. And unfortunately, we had to bring her to the hospital when she was 12 days old because she was breathing funny and we didn't get to bring her home. So that was the start hmm, of a lot of fun parts of our life. And that's when that verse got introduced to us. Okay, so how, how did you feel when someone shared that verse with you going through such a deep loss? It was the wrong time to say it. Um, neither one of us was at a point where we could process what the verse meant. Um, it's not what we needed to hear at the time. And it was more of a slap in the face saying, this happened to you on purpose and we're gonna do something with it. God will do something with it. So he picked you guys to do this with. And I don't think that's how God works. God doesn't pick on us to say, well, I need to do this today, so I'll get them, or I'll get them. That's not how God works. So Kelly, what were your feelings when you heard that verse going through this? It's, wow, you can't, you can't lay that on me at this moment in my life where all I can do is breathe. And I have to remind myself if I'm on the in or I'm on the out. And that's it. And then someone lays this huge, like, what is it? A huge piece of doctrine, a huge, this theology on you. So what did you do with your feelings um, about that verse? Like, where do you kind of camp? Because okay. then you hear this verse going forward, so. You got this one. I got one here. You go ahead. Okay. Here's a piece of a puzzle. Piece of a puzzle. You love puzzles. I do love puzzles. So right on the back of that, Romans 8, 28. Okay. So we're going through what, what happened. Yep. All we can do is survive. And then you come back and you give me that. And you say, all things work together for good. And you're on your way. Well, this is a piece of your puzzle. You gave it to me. I literally spent the next 33 years trying to find where it fits in my puzzle. Okay, okay. So it was very damaging. Wow. You know, life can be like a puzzle. And there's a lot of pieces. And as we go through life, we kind of gather some of those pieces. And sometimes it just feels like a mess. Not only that, but it can feel like we don't even have the cover. We don't know what it's supposed to look like. What's the end picture? And then we pick up one of those pieces and like Kelly, 33 years trying to figure out where does this piece go? How does this fit into this picture? And we can get lost in that. And then we read this verse. And we know that God works all things together for good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. And I think Kelly's right. God doesn't just decide, hey, I'm gonna have something bad happen, so then I can come in and make something good out of it and then everyone will see me. I don't think he's like that. I don't think he just picks on us and tries to do that. I think what's really important is when we take a verse like this, we have to look at where is it in scripture? So Romans chapter eight is an entire chapter that talks about the difference between life in the spirit and life in the flesh. 
And so I encourage you to read through that. Life in the spirit, life in the flesh. What is the difference? And so when we take this verse, if we try to make human sense out of a spiritual reality, it doesn't work. Because this verse is a spiritual reality, not a human reality, not a flesh reality. And we need to have that life in the spirit in order to understand this. So what is that? Really, it's a personal relationship with God. And if you're here today and you're thinking, I don't know what that is, I don't know what you're talking about, or maybe you're like, how do I grow in that? How do I develop that kind of relationship? We have pastors, we have our prayer team here after the service that we would be love, we would just be happy to talk to you and engage with you more about that. But I want to look at this verse from that perspective. And so as I read it in another translation, in Young's literal translation, I want to read it to you out of here because it changes the words. It says, and we have known that to those loving God, all things do work together for good to those who are called according to purpose. So here's the interesting thing. The words are reversed. It starts with to those loving God, and then it works together for a purpose, not your purpose, God's purpose. Those loving God receive a promise. What's the promise? Nothing bad's gonna happen to you. God's gonna come in and save it. He's gonna make it all work out great. All things work together for good. So you're not gonna suffer. You're not gonna go through trials. All you gotta do, pray hard enough, have enough faith, put enough work into your Christian walk and you'll be fine. You won't have these kind of problems. That's the promise. Or God's gonna like cause these bad things to happen then bring good out of it so he can show himself. And I'm gonna say a big no to all of that. That is not the promise that we're given. The promise that we're given is that God will take every single piece of your life, the good things, the bad things, the challenging things, the rough things, and none of it will be wasted. He will use it. He will use it somehow. It's interesting because that phrase, all things work together, actually in Greek comes from the word synergē or synergeo, which is, actually means synergy. Do you know what synergy is? If you're like, if you're science background, you probably know exactly what it means and I'm gonna try to explain it. Synergy is when you have all these different elements come together and the end result is greater than if you just added up the character traits of all those different elements. That's synergy. So now I want you to think about the fact that God takes every single piece of our life, the good things, the hard things, the bad things, pulls them all together and the end result is like, wow. Like it's amazing than just adding all these little pieces. The picture is incredible. It's something that you can't imagine. And so do you have faith in a God like that? Do you have faith that God will do that with your life? Because here's the reality. God does not cause these bad things to happen in your life. He allows them to happen in your life. And do you know why? Because it's the gift of a little something we like to call free will. Well, maybe it's a consequence of free will, free choice, living in a fallen world where rough things happen. He will not cause it, but he will allow it. But he promises, I will not let any of it be wasted. I will use it. And I think this is where we get frustrated because we don't know why is this happening? What is the purpose? What is the plan? What is these pictures supposed to be? What are these pieces going to come into? And we get frustrated because I think sometimes we get glimpses, right? Like I put together pieces of this puzzle and I saw this, it's Olaf. Now, if you don't know who Olaf is, it's your Sunday afternoon movie this afternoon. But you start getting a glimpse of thinking, oh, I see how it's working together. But what is Olaf doing? We have no idea until the rest of the pieces come into play. But we have to choose that God sees the big picture, right? So in order to have that kind of faith that believes God has a bigger picture, I think we need something called even if, so that faith. Even if, so that faith. So let me tell you what I mean by that. Even if bad things happen, even if you suffer, even if you go through hard times, even if things don't make sense, 
even if God doesn't do things the way you want him to. God, you believe, will bring all things together for good so that his plan works. His plan, his purpose is accomplished. That's what if then so that faith is. So let me give you an example. We're gonna go back to Daniel chapter three in the Old Testament and there is the story for three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And King Nebuchadnezzar at this time builds this huge statue, all right? And when you build a statue in that day and age, then it becomes a God. So the deal is you worship the statue because it is a God. So King Nebuchadnezzar said, when the music plays, this is what I want you to do. Bow down, worship the statue or the God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were followers of the one true God. They followed our God. And they said, no, we're not gonna do it. We know that it's wrong. Okay, here's the consequence. If you don't bow down, you will be thrown into a fire, into a furnace, which no human can withstand. So basically you will die. So the music plays, they refuse to bow and King Nebuchadnezzar confronts them and says, okay guys, what's going on here? Why are you not following? And this is how they respond. This is Daniel chapter three, verses 16 to 18. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty, but even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue that you have set up because they knew that worshiping the statue was wrong and they chose to do the right thing regardless of the consequence. Now, here's the thing. These guys believe God totally could save them. Don't know how, but they believed he could rescue us. He could stop this from happening. He could save our lives, but they did not know if he would. And sometimes as followers of Jesus, I think we can get stuck in this mindset then I'm not, I don't have to suffer. I'm not gonna have to go through pain. If I just pray hard enough, if I work at it hard enough, God will rescue me because the more I pray, he will just rescue me. And all things work together for good, right? So I don't have to worry about that. And I think we get stuck in that. And yet in John 16, 33, Jesus tells us here on earth, you will have trials, sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Only in heaven will we have the complete picture of peace and healing and no suffer and no pain and no tears, right? That's what we're told. But right now, we're here. We're still here. So what happens with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Well, spoiler alert, I'm gonna tell you the end of the story. So God does rescue them. They are promoted in their positions. The king acknowledges the one true God. So God is becoming more known, which we can see, oh, this is why it all happened. So again, we see pieces that are linked together. Oh, I can see some purpose behind this. However, this isn't always the case. I wanna jump to the New Testament and look at Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And here he is the night before he's arrested and he's praying. And this is his prayer in Matthew 26, 39. My father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken from me. Yet I want your will, not mine to be done. You see, Jesus knew that he was facing pain, being arrested, being beaten, hung on a cross, dying a long, slow, painful death. And what is this prayer? God, please, I don't wanna do this. But if it's your plan, if it's your purpose, I will do it. Because he had a heaven perspective. He had a heavenly perspective that said, your plan is more important than my plan. Even if it means I suffer, your plan trumps, right? So a few um, hours later and a few more prayers later, we hear Jesus saying this prayer in verse 42. My father, 
if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink from it, your will be done. Because Jesus had an if then faith. Even if I have to suffer, even if I have to hang on a cross, even if I have to go through the most worst pain you can ever possibly imagine, I will do it so that you don't have to. So that my dad can have a personal relationship with you. So that you will never have to suffer the consequences of anything you ever do wrong, think wrong, be wrong, anything, because I love you that much. So I will die so that you have this. He had that perspective. He saw the purpose. He saw the plan. But let's for a minute take this same scenario and look at it from the perspective of the disciples and the people who were following Jesus at that time. So here they watched this man they had been following for three years. They saw him raise the dead, heal the sick, walk on water, multiply food. They saw him do things they have never seen or experienced ever before. And then they're watching him on the cross. Can you imagine what they're thinking? Just get yourself off the cross. If you can raise the dead, you can do that. What are you doing? This doesn't make any sense. Why is this happening? In fact, I think they would have thought, great, bad guys won. Really? It doesn't make sense. And I think for us, that's where we struggle. Because bad things happen, we don't see the long-term result. We don't see how it fits in. And you know what the hard part is? Sometimes we may not know until we get to heaven. We may not know. And it's hard to be okay with that. I think we really need that if, even if, so that faith, even if things don't go the way I want, even if I have to suffer, even if I have to go through hard times, I believe God will somehow not waste any of it. He will use it and he will accomplish his purpose through it. And I have to focus on that. I have to believe that. Because when you read and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them, I have to have an even if so that faith, if I'm gonna live that, if I'm gonna believe that. So how do you do that? How do you get that kind of faith? So I wanna give you kind of four things that I think will help us. First, I think we have to surrender. We just have to be okay with surrendering our desires, our wants, our needs, you know, what we wanna see happen, we have to be able to surrender it for a greater purpose and really believe that God does have a greater purpose. And that is a choice, right? That is a faith choice to say, I surrender. Secondly, I think we need to live in community. I think just as Kelly and Vicki had that sense of community and people to talk to and wrestle through verses, we need each other. We have to. Because when we go through tough times, how do I make sense of what scripture is saying when I'm in the midst of a very dark place? So to me, living in community means you you need a safe place. You need a group. (laughs) How to be said, you need a group. And you know what? After every experience on Sunday mornings, we have a group that meets in the cafe. Far corner right by the window there, there's a sign that says Encore, and there's always a group there that just sits half an hour, talks about what went on during the service. What did you hear? What did you think? How did you feel? How does it interact with your life? Maybe that's a good place for you to start. Thirdly, I think we need to listen. We got to listen to what God is saying, because he's not just going to leave you out there. He's going to speak truth to you through scripture. He's going to speak to you when you pray, when you journal, when you talk to other believers, God following believers, he is going to speak to you. Are you listening? And I think fourthly, we gotta focus on the who and not the why. We have to focus on the who and the who is Jesus. No matter what is going on, he is still with you. He is still walking with you. He is still very much present, even though we don't know the why. So where did Kelly and Vicki end up on their journey with this verse and how it applied to their lives. I'm gonna let them finish their story. 
So it's almost like they're they're trying to give you some sort of hope and peace, but in, in the end, that's not what you're feeling. What are you feeling when you hear it? Back then, nothing. All I could do was breathe in and out for years. It wasn't the, the week of or the month of for years. My, own, my sisters and my family don't even know. It was just in and out. Like that puzzle. Yes. Here, you gave it, you gave it to me. I worked on this for 33 years. And I, I would say to the person, I appreciate you doing community with me. We need community in this Christian walk. That perfectly fits your story. I can't make it fit mine. Because yours is a puzzle of a red barn. Mine is a puzzle of a blue seascape. Okay. Somewhere in my box, where my puzzle came from, is that verse. If and when I find it, it will fit. So what advice would you give to someone um, in applying that verse to their life? I think that verse is, is really meant to, to be used before you're in trouble, before the crisis. I think it's a foundational verse. Not, it's not the whole foundation of the Christian faith, but it's an important piece of the foundation. If you throw it at me during a crisis, it's like throwing a massive boulder on top of my house where it doesn't belong. But if it's at the bottom and I can trust that it's there, even if it doesn't make sense today, it's part of the foundation. It's not, it's not up there in the details, if that makes any sense. How did you process your feelings through that verse? Like moving from, um, I can't stand hearing it, it upsets me to hear those words, to actually arriving at a point where I can hear it and actually apply it to my life. How did you work through that process? I think it's just, like I said earlier, just getting a little bit older and understanding more that it's not just, it's not just this little sentence. It's a whole story. And you gotta take it as a whole, not you can't pick and choose what points you wanna. It's not a bad verse. It's just how it's applied at the time. It's a very good thing to say to somebody, but yeah. you gotta be careful. And we've gone through other devastating things that over a seven year cycle, I can honestly say if that bad thing didn't happen, this great thing never could have. So I can say to myself, this verse applies. You can't say that to me. Oh, uh, excellent. Okay. I think that's the difference. I think that's when it becomes either powerful or hurtful. Wow. So this verse can be either powerful or hurtful. And I think that time and perspective changes a lot of things, doesn't it? In order for us to see the real power in this verse, we gotta work at fitting it in to our own lives. And honestly, I think, I think Kelly was right on. This verse is foundational. And it's foundational, we need to get it into our foundation before the crisis happens. And how do we do that? I think we do that by developing that even if so that faith. That faith that is able to surrender what's going on, my wants for the bigger plan. That faith that listens to what God is saying. That faith that lives in community and interacts with others. And that faith that is focused on the who and not the why. Because when bad things are happening, God is still at work. He is still at work in the hard times and he is on a journey with us to a bigger plan, to a bigger picture. But Jesus has to be at the foundation. 
He has to be, because none of this will make sense if he isn't. And I really believe what Kelly, what Vicki said is so true, that all things work together for good is a journey. It's not a sentence. And we have to keep in mind the whole story. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you that you have a great big plan that is so much bigger than what we could ever imagine. I thank you that you hold the puzzle box in your hand. You see the picture of all of these things in our life coming together for a greater good to fulfill your purpose and your plan. And I thank you, Lord, that even in the hard times, even in the challenging times, even in the times when things make no sense at all, that you are still there, you are still present. And so Lord, today we just ask you to be that foundation. Lord, help us to grow that even if, sow that faith, then I know that even if things don't look like I want them to, even if I have to suffer, even if they make no sense, I will do it so that your purpose prevails. I thank you that you are present, that you love us in it all, through it all, and you do work all things together. You waste nothing that happens in our life. And I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So today, I just want to bless you. I want to bless you with the knowledge that God loves you and wants that personal relationship with you. I bless you with the fact that God is at work, whether you are sitting here today and you are struggling and you are in the midst of a big challenge, He is with you. And I wanna bless you with the knowledge that he will waste nothing you go through, good and hard, nothing is wasted. He will work it all for good. And I bless you with this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Awesome, what a great message from Pastor Janet. We are so thankful for her and for you here who have come here to join us today to hear what God has in store for us. And if you've decided today that you want to know that God who can strengthen you in all circumstances and you want to take that next step to know him, please connect with us. Please send us an email, a text, call us, or connect with one of the pastors outside in the lobby with one of our leaders who have a blue shirt, our volunteers would love to hear from you. As well, if you're online and you've decided to make a decision for Christ or you want someone to chat with, please reach out to the pastor who's there. For anyone who wants to connect to groups or you want to get to know people in a large church like this, we want you to get plugged in. So please connect with us at the Connections Well. We'll give you information for that. If anyone would like to be prayed for today, we have an amazing team here already at the front. Look at them go. These volunteers are gung-ho just to pour into you. They want the Spirit of God to speak into your life. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you need strength. Maybe you're going through a difficult situation. Well, please come up to the front after the experience, and we're going to pray for you. If anyone is interested in giving generously to this wonderful cause here where we are preaching about God's truth, about Jesus Christ, and taking it not only to our community but to the nations, we have a tip-tap station outside at the front entrance. You're welcome to tap up to 20 times. I'm thinking of getting one for myself, so if you want to come by to Beamsville and tap several times, I'll take that many as well. Uh, We're also here if you want to give online, if you want to give through internet, or uh, we have a debit machine and envelopes at the other side here to the left, please, you're welcome to use that as well. And lastly, if you have any questions, please text us at 905-937-5610, or you can look at the seat back in front of you and use the QR code to connect with us online. Thanks again. This is all from me. Have a wonderful day and enjoy the weather.